Hey there, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Um, today's video is an addition to the AWS Cloud Practitioner series. Um, of course, if I end up doing any more AWS uh, certifications, I'll make sure to add on to this playlist. So the naming might just stick to AWS or my cloud journey. Um, and if you are new here, you can definitely check out my other playlists where I've done other certifications like ACCA, CISA, and um, you'll probably pick up as you stay on this channel that I do love, love, love doing certifications. I like staying up to date with what's um, going to boost my career, what's going on out here that's important. And I would encourage you to do the same. Um, and in case you're wondering why do AWS, what is even this certification? Uh, make sure to watch a video of a link here where I talk about why I did it and why I think you should also be cloud savvy. So today's video is an addition to my video last week. You'll probably pick up that I probably filmed them on the same day because I'm wearing the same thing. Um, yes, I did. I filmed all this um, on the same day just to make sure that the content is ready for you and you have these videos week on week. Um, so without further ado, today's video, I will be walking through you through the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam. Um, so I'll be going through the exam guide. I would encourage you as a first thing, once you have decided you are doing AWS Cloud Practitioner or any other certification that they have available, that you do download the exam guide. Most people tend to just go straight into any tutorial um, uh, material that they have. I would encourage you to first go through the exam guide get to understand what's expected, what you can expect on the big day when you have your exam, and then you can tailor your revision plan, your study plan accordingly. Because I prefer you work smart, you don't have to work hard every time, or put your efforts in the right place where you are most prone to bear fruit. Um, so the exam, the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam, um, is a multiple choice exam. So there's no essay, there's no open-ended questions, you get to choose one correct answer from a choice of about four. Um, but then not just that, the only other style of question you can expect on the exam is where they expect you to choose uh, multiple answers. So multiple answers are correct from the selection. So the point is, it is not open-ended. You have to choose an answer or sometimes you might need to choose a few <laughs> from the options available. There is no negative marking. So if you get something wrong, you just get it wrong. Um, there are four key domains. Um, in terms of concepts that you need to understand for this um, exam. So basically there are four topics and the four domains are cloud concepts. If you see me looking down I'm on my phone just making sure that I don't leave anything out. So cloud concepts um, is domain one, domain two is security and compliance, domain three is technology and domain four is billing and pricing. I'll make sure to put a link to where you can download the exam guide um, in the description box so that um, you're able to go through this in your free time. Um, so these topics are not weighted the same. So this basically means in terms of how even they represent the number of questions that appear in the exam will depend on this weighting. So I'd encourage you to check the weighting of the domains and um, propose proportion your efforts based on that because you don't want to spend so much time on a topic that only makes up 11% of the exam for example. So technology domain 3 is the one that takes the highest amount and I must say it's the most difficult tool. So definitely tailor your efforts to make sure you have clocked um, the technology topics and concepts um, and that's, this is closely followed by cloud concepts and security and compliance. So the domain that has the least number of questions will be billing and pricing. So that probably tells you everything that you need to know. Um, so for you to pass, focus on those first three. Um, and it, it doesn't hurt, of course, to focus on domain four, but you want to work smart. So if you have limited time, then you know where to place your efforts. And yeah, simply put, in the exam guide, you get to see all the different syllabus points. So depending on whatever resources you're using, you can just stick against that to see, have I understood this? Have I understood that? Um, and it's just a good reference uh, guide towards as you're studying, just to see, sense check, am I in the right, um, in the right place? You get your, am I, facing, am I going in the right direction? Sorry, I didn't realize, so I didn't know what I was saying there. But anyway, when you are um, doing your exam on the day, I would encourage you to log in about um, half an hour earlier 
um, just because so I did mine virtually you, you, you have you do have the option to go and do in person but I did mine virtually and they're very thorough with showing you around the room you need to show that like where you're going to do your exam I'd encourage you to have a clear desk um, make sure that it's clear under the table as well because you will be told to do 360 like show the roof as well show literally from top to bottom because they want to make sure that you're not cheating and this can take a lot of time so i would definitely say log in at least half an hour earlier before the time for your exam and just get through the invigilator re review bit um so that i remember was a bit challenging i was just like oh my gosh it's taking a lot of time but it's something that just has to be done you get your results there and then um, after the exam so you get it's all marked electronically so you get to see whether you've passed or failed so it's literally pass or fail but you do get a transcript after some time so it's not usually immediately i think it's like about then i got it 24 hours later the next day but you do leave the exam knowing whether you've passed or failed um yeah so that's about it um because i wanted this to be brief if you do have any questions let me know in the comment section and i'll do my best to address them and if you are thinking about starting your cloud journey just start it because it never hurts to know um knowledge knowledge is always you know i'm even forgetting those quotes that we used to get when you in primary school to encourage you to to read um, but basically it doesn't hurt to know especially when you put your efforts in something that's growing like cloud so this emerging technology is good to get your hand on it you don't have to know everything it's good to just at least know the fundamentals that's why i did cloud practitioner but if this is if you're in the tech industry and you actually are maybe a software engineer um then you probably want to go past foundational and do some of those um, even specialty ones, depending on what you specialize in. Are you a database person? Are you a security person? Um, you can just pick the one that most suits your career and your path. All right, see you in the next one. Bye.